everybody. Welcome to the Hallmarkies podcast. And we're really excited today. We love talking with the actors in these fun movies. And today we have Alexander Harris with us. And she's in the new movie that's going to be on Up TV, The Soulmate Search. And Alexander, thank you so much for coming on the podcast. I am thrilled to be here. Thanks for having me. Yes. So this is your first time on the podcast. I'd like to give you a chance to introduce yourself and tell us a little bit about how you got started acting. I'm Alex Harris. Hi, everybody. Nice to meet you. Um, Well, I started acting when I was pretty young in musical theater, Mm -hmm. like a community local theater musicals. Um, So kind of that's probably where where it all started for me. I kind of got the bug there, was very into musical theater all through um, grade school and in high school. I did a couple of the school plays, but was in sports. They made me choose. Mm -hmm. And uh went to college, not for acting, um, Uh and ended up starting to audition for stuff locally and kind of kept pursuing it from there. So I saw in your IMDb that you are were got your start in musical theater. So and I'm a theater critic as well as a movie critic. Oh no way. (laughs) Yes. And so I had to ask, like, did you have any like notable roles? I mean, Yes, but they were, <laughs> but they were like, you know, kids yeah, local yeah, theater yeah. roles. But yes, I, I had, I mean, I had an absolute blast yeah. doing theater. I got to probably my favorite. I mean, and I was, I think I was like, 12, but mm-hmm. it was a kid's kid's version of uh, Cinderella. And I got to mm-hmm. play Cinderella. Ah, very nice. And it was, it was just, you know, at the time, the biggest deal that had ever <laughs> happened to me. <laughs> so It was great. It was great. Well, that's good. I mean, <laughs> w- were you at all shy about having to like fall in love with the prince and everything like that at 12? I mean, probably. <laughs> I actually, I I know that they kind of like, you know, made those really wholesome. There was sure, never sure. like a kiss at the end. Right. But I will say I actually, I actually had my very first kiss uh-huh. on stage in a play. Yes. As so, any actor should it should I feel like that's that should be you, you right up so like it was so my <laughs> my very first kiss my first uh-huh. kiss was on stage in front of people yeah so. you're like I don't know how to do this <laughs> director <laughs> close your eyes <laughs> hope for the best that's really funny <laughs> I love that I love hearing it but about the like shows people were in in high school and things like that I just think it's so fun uh so uh, do you remember your first role that you ever got on on film, television or film? Yes, I do, mm-hmm. and it's it's actually quite embarrassing. What is um, it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I uh, when I was um, still doing the musical theater program, the kids' uh-huh. musical theater program, but I was I was probably like fourteen or fifteen at uh-huh. the time. Yeah. Um, I got a commercial for 7-Eleven. Ah, uh, that's pretty big. <laughs> well, it was like, it, would, it was really fun, okay? It was mm-hmm. really fun. But I was like going into high school and it was kind of like this Hannah Montana-esque thing where a girl uh-huh. was singing about icy drinks and um, <laughs> and they actually didn't even yeah, use like my voice. Slurpees. You were- yes. <laughs> Slurpee spokesperson. Yeah, that was well, like my even... dream. <laughs> we used to love. I mean, our, um, uh, our babysitter who watched us uh, growing up—that was her big thing. Which I'm gonna take you. I'll take you to get Slurpees, and we uh, all thought like, ooh, <laughs> ooh, <laughs> very exciting, living big. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's right. <laughs> yeah, like um, but I, I didn't live that one down for a long time. I was in high school, and it played it played a lot, and it yeah. was. Uh, it was, well, uh, you'd be living it up for me. So uh, <laughs> that's pretty cool. I mean, were uh, you, so it said on IMDb that you were from Oklahoma. Had you, mm-hmm. is this, was this just like a local campaign or? Were you yeah, I, my goodness, oh. I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> we're hunting it down as we speak. <laughs> it's probably out 7-11, there. 11 Oklahoma. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> uh, um, yeah. Yeah. It was, it was like they actually came to the kids' theater school to oh, find, wow. you know, find the cast for the, mm-hmm. for the commercial. So, yeah. 
So I noticed that you've done some horror. Mm -hmm. horror, And I was just curious what that is like uh, to be in those kind of roles and to, to try to like, be in peril and effectively do that uh i'm not a horror girl yeah. i mean <laughs> i'm uh i'm much more lean into the rom-com yeah. vibe um, i noticed i didn't say i had watched any of them <laughs> but- i mean so actually one of those movies which is um probably like the biggest horror movie i've done which is the like the franchise of hellraiser yeah, yeah. um <laughs> it is a. Uh, I actually have not watched that movie all the way through Mm -hmm. because that kind of stuff sticks in my head and it's uh, not for me, but that was, that was quite the experience just because the special effects were on another level. Mm -hmm. Gary Tunnicliffe um, actually was the director Mm -hmm. and like, I think he wrote it too. And he oversaw all the special effects. He was like the designer of the original. Mm -hmm. Um, And it was so realistic that we had people on set, like, not handling it well. Wow. So, so you were, like, one of the officers looking into, like, the whole pinhead situation? or Right. Yeah. So okay. I was playing, like, a, like a rookie officer who was uh, kind of along for the ride. And, uh-huh. um, I mean, this is it's been out forever. So I'm not yeah. too worried about giving spoilers. But one of the <laughs> cops that she was working with ended yeah. up being one of the bad guys. And, uh-huh. She I, mean, I don't think trouble. there's a, the Venn diagram between Hallmarkies listeners and Hellraiser fans is probably not large. So I think, you know, you're safe, but <laughs> it's, it's not, it's not the vibe. It's not the Hallmarkies vibe. That's right. But, but I always thought that would be interesting to, to have to kind of like pretend to be like scared or in peril or, or like that would be the, those kinds of scenes would be hard. I can, it can out. definitely be like emotionally taxing. Like if you're yeah. having to scream and cry for hours, I mean, mm-hmm. yeah, it's exhausting. Yeah. <laughs> uh, okay. <laughs> full on workout. So y- when you were in the nature of romance, I think that was the first of these romances that you were in. It, like, yeah. According to IMDb. So did the Daughtrys like give you tips? Did they like, yeah. Cause they're like you know, kings and queens of the genre. Right. Yeah. Right. Um, I, only worked on that for like I think two or three days oh okay um yeah so I was super in and out I played like a Mm. pretty small character of like a girl who was at the campsite who lost her dog and Mm -hmm. um which was the impetus for the two going on their little journey together to you know um (laughs) everyone was super kind were you in LA at this point or were how did you get to kind of involved in this whole rom-com scene I, I moved to LA. Oh, to no. LA. Yeah. I've actually never been to Canada. Oh, so. okay. <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, I was in LA, but I had gone to school in Arkansas and I could like, they were, I, that's where that filmed. It filmed in Arkansas okay. in like this beautiful state park area. Mm-hmm. So I um, had kind of like gotten to know some people in the Arkansas film scene mm-hmm. Um and so when I saw that this thing pop up, I, you know, reached out and was like, Hey, uh, I would love to read for this. Like, this is, I love rom-coms. This is what I want to do, Yeah, you know, and mm-hmm. kind of lucked out. And that's kind yeah. of, yeah. Ho, ho, ho. We'd like to take a second and thank our sponsor for this episode of the podcast. It's the Hallmarkies Patreon. Do you love Hallmarkies podcasts, especially at Christmas? Do you enjoy the holiday previews, recaps, interviews, and bonus episodes? If the answer is yes, please consider supporting the Hallmarkies Patreon. We need your help to do what we do both during the Christmas season and all year round. But not only do you help a podcast led by strong, independent women by becoming a Patreon, you get to become a part of the Hallmarkies family. Starting at only $2 a month as a patron, you will have access to our Facebook Patreon group where we talk about the movies, shows, and more all year. We also have many monthly patron watch-alongs with guests like Lacey Chabert, Natalie Hall, Paul Campbell, Mary Lou Henner, and more, giving their behind-the-scenes details of their films. As a patron, you also have the chance to provide input into the podcast and even join us at different tiers. So this Christmas season, spread some cheer to the Hallmarkies Patreon and become a member today. You won't regret it. Go to patreon.com slash hallmarkies to learn more. 
That's patreon.com slash homeworkies. So yeah. on IMDb, it said something about you live on a boat. What, mm. what's, <laughs> so tell us about that. That's exciting. Yeah. So um, me and my husband, Matt, uh-huh. lived on a sailboat in Los Angeles for about four years before we um, we kind of took off to do uh-huh. a partial circumnavigation. The plan oh was gosh. to sail to... Uh, New Zealand, like the the islands and and see where we wanted to go from there. So that and that was um, 21, I think, is when okay. we so that how you out. Coped with the pandemic. You're like, we're yeah, out of here. We're out of here. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, living on the sailboat during COVID was kind of like a saving grace. We yeah. would we would go um, we would go sail and we'd go swim and fish mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. kind of self-isolate in that way and it was I mean it sounds terrible to say but it was kind of some of the Mm -hmm. best times of my life just because I had like this time and freedom to be with my husband and and like some of our close friends kind of were in a like little pod with us so Mm -hmm. yeah it was pretty great um I mean I'm only jealous I love there's nothing I love more than the ocean I love being uh, on the ocean by the ocean in the ocean (laughs) so I think it's great Living on a sailboat is the best and yeah. I will absolutely do it again. We're off the boat now. We ended mm-hmm. up because of COVID. So we, we sailed down to Mexico and yes. we got, we kind of got stuck here because nice. the next variant came out and uh-huh. the French government shut down Polynesia. So we couldn't make that big jump. <laughs> and uh, now we're opening a little boutique hotel down here in Mexico. Oh my so. gosh, look at you. That's amazing. Yeah. Wow. We'll, just, we'll have our own little rom-com about it one day. <laughs> okay, good. Let me executive produce. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> <That'd be> great. <laughs> well, I think you you should check out a movie called Maiden. This is from 2018. Maiden? Yes, it was at Sundance Film Festival. I love it. It's so good. It's documentary about... Oh, f- I is, think... Is it- it's about I the first this, all but... female um, uh, racing team, sailboating team to uh, compete in the race around the world. It's so good. Yes. Yeah, you'll I've love it. seen this. Oh, you've seen it? Yes. Yes. It's really I've good, right? Yeah it's, yeah. it's fantastic. Yeah. Anyway, um, so Christmas at the Amish Bakery, that was the first time that we saw you. So how did that all come about? And how did you get involved in that project? Well, Christmas at the Amish Bakery was actually after, like, well after Soulmate Search. Soulmate Search is, mm-hmm. was pr- was my first, very first lead in a rom com. That's interesting. Um, yeah, and uh, uh, Christmas at the Amish Bakery was another one that uh, I read for the casting director Ricky Masler, who I mm-hmm. just love and adore. She's like my fairy godmother. <laughs> um, she calls me in for. Um, a lot of the projects she thinks I'm right for. When I mm-hmm. ended up leaving to go sailing, I I kind of took a break from acting. So she is kind of who kept me in the loop and kept calling me and was like, hey, just read for this. Just ch- mm-hmm. try it out. See mm-hmm. how it goes. Um, but yeah, I auditioned for that one and, and had a great time doing it. That one was shot out in Kentucky. Mm-hmm. It, was, it was a super fun one. So, so you actually, uh, you didn't self-tape? You, oh, I did. Yeah. Oh, you no, self-taped. I self-taped. Yeah, self-taped. I self-taped yeah. and sent that one in. Yeah. And uh, and so when you got the role, that must have been kind of intimidating if like playing this Amish, uh, Amish person and not only an Amish person, but Amish person who had left and then coming back and the whole story. Right. And, and the whole, it was actually quite um, eye-opening about the Amish mm-hmm. culture, how they mm-hmm. handle that, because as an outsider, I kind of assumed if you left the Amish culture, you kind of like were cutting ties with your family. And that's, I mean, I think there are, there's in some cases that's, that's what happens unfortunately, but, but oftentimes you're able to like maintain a relationship with your family. Um, it's just a little bit different than it might've been otherwise. Yeah. Well, they even say in the, as long as you haven't, um, taken a vow of faith, I think is what they say. And, mm-hmm. and, and broken and, it and broken it in the movie uh so yeah i liked that too that uh, a lot of times sort of religious characters 
are portrayed as either being like perfect and of no fault mm-hmm. if it's you know a faith-based film or uh or just completely judgmental and horrible and everything like they don't even love their daughter anymore and i liked that this was kind of this that you could tell they were like sad they missed you and sad that you had you know left and but but i liked you know at one point the dad was like we raised i raised you right you know, you were I, right. Jonathan was great. He was yeah, such he was good. so charming. He's so he, he's such like that soft spoken, quiet. Yeah. His voice is all low and gravelly, you know. Mm-hmm. He was he was a perfect casting for that. Yeah. Well, did you feel like you had to do anything to kind of build up that family chemistry with either you or the actress playing your sister or any of that? Because I it love feel Francesca's pretty natural. great, isn't she? She's yeah, yeah, so yeah. lovely. Um mm-hmm. it you know, it kind of was pretty easy to mm-hmm. kind of build up that chemistry with that group. Yeah. Um, it's always really nice when when you kind of come into something and it kind of clicks just right away. Um, I also just think the fact that the whole story was about family and mm-hmm. love and forgiveness and kind of like forging new paths back home. Mm-hmm. Uh everyone kind of went into it with a mindset of like family and Mm -hmm. the importance of family, because that was like an overarching theme. And we kind of, everyone going into it with that mindset really helped create that familial Mm -hmm. feeling. Was it fun? Like filming all those sort of like baking montages and things like that. Oh yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Super fun. And, and so we actually got all of those baked goods from local Amish bakeries. Mm -hmm. (laughs) So they were all fantastic. Um, I'm sure. Yeah. So (laughs) it was great. Mm -hmm. All of it. And we only thing that we, the only thing that we, uh, that we said about is that y'all needed to have your hair up. (laughs) We were like, "Ah." (laughs) probably. Yeah. I was like, Oh, put that up. (laughs) Yeah, and my hair was all over the place the whole time. It was just <laughs> we like, yeah, I, have a, I have a lot of hair. So <laughs> We'd like to take a second and thank our sponsor for this episode of the podcast. It's Baker Bookhouse and their spring releases. First, The Seamstress of Acadia by Laura France. Caught between the warring French and English on Canada's rugged shores in 1755, Sylvie Gallant is forced from her Acadian home and family and is alone in colonial Virginia. Now the enemy soldier who once tore her world apart might be the key to restoring her shattered past. Next, The Irish Matchmaker by Jennifer Dybell. Catriona Daly is no stranger to the business of love, even though personally she has yet to find it. Eager for a match of her own and a fresh start away from her sleepy village, she makes grand plans for the annual Liz Dordvarna matchmaking festival. She never expects, however, a shy widowed sheep farmer to distract her from her goal. To get ready for summer, we have Just for the Summer by Melody Carlson. Ginny Masters manages a Seattle boutique hotel but is tired of the rat race. Jacqueline Bowman manages her grandfather's fishing lodge in western Washington, but she longs for city life. Eager for a change, these women swap jobs for the summer, but it's not quite so simple to find the happiness and love they're searching for. And finally, Sandkissel Inn by Irene Hannon. When a man struggling to recoup from a tragic loss and woman still reeling from an unplanned career detour join forces to save a floundering B&B on the Oregon coast, they might also discover that hope and healing can sometimes be found in the most unexpected places. You can pick up any of these books wherever books are sold now or later this spring and save up to 40% off on these or the whole spring book release list at bakerbookhouse.com slash featured slash rebel dash fiction or use the affiliate link below. That's bakerbookhouse.com slash featured slash rebel dash fiction. I enjoyed it. I, I thought it was, a, it was a sweet little movie and... I, uh, it was really fun for the podcast because, uh, you know, Gladrill had done uh, a recap that I did with Gladrill Steinman. She had done three previously, three Amish movies, and she'd come on the podcast the year before with her husband, Kevin, and, uh, and we'd had a great time and I really loved the interview and, uh, but she had nothing to do with this. There was no like reason for her, you know, to volunteer her time. 
And, but I messaged her and I, you know, I said, Hey, we got this Amish movie and I just thought it would be fun. You know, you could provide your insight and, uh, and you know, sometimes, and rightfully so, sometimes actors are reticent to like be seen as critiquing others work. And I totally get that. So I, I, I really didn't think she would say yes, but the fact that she was like, Oh, I had such a great time on your show. And, and that made me feel really good. And, uh, <laughs> and that she came on and, and, uh, and, I was just, it was just one of my favorite uh, recaps of all of last year. It was yeah, it was fun. a super fun podcast. I, I listened to it because yeah. it was about the movie. <laughs> I reposted it on my Instagram. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and I'm, I checked I'm with glad her you before liked it. Because I wouldn't have had her come on if she like hated it or something like that. Like, that would be awkward. So I Good, knew that she liked it. <laughs> uh -huh. But, uh, but yeah, it was, that was a, a really fun experience. And, uh, and it's just nice to know that people have, you know, that people have warm memories of, you know, coming on and that's what you hope. And, uh, and I've always enjoyed the, that weird. it's like such a weird sub genre of, of these romantic movies is the Amish right? sub genre. I had no idea. I didn't know yeah, going into just it, in but I, movies but there's tons of of novels tons, tons. yeah tons and tons of novels <laughs> yeah. about like amish falling amish in love. love and yeah it really is i think maybe part of it is that they're not going to be watching films for True. the most part you know <laughs> and so they're kind of an easy group to kind of you're not going to get like pushback or uh, for the most you're not part, gonna you know, offend because they'll probably yeah. never see <laughs> as opposed to like other groups that off uh, that are, you know, that, uh, that are going to be part of the audience also watching. So they're going to be like, Oh, you didn't do this right. You're going to do this right. Or, you know, <laughs> so I think that's part of it, but, but I yeah, think it's, it's, also, it's very interesting. It's also just kind of like, you can easily romanticize the idea yeah. of of being disconnected in that way and mm -hmm. having this set of values right like no cell phones no social media no like constant stream of like depressing news coming your way mm -hmm. there is that's true there's something kind of really like in the sense of life romantic mm -hmm. about it and uh pure yeah which is yeah that's no, true to say well and they're very forgiving very peaceful people you know, I think mm -hmm. that 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 helps a lot too. Uh, so, uh, the let's talk about the soulmate search. So, this is coming up uh, uh, for Up TV, and tell us a little bit about uh, the movie. Tell the audience a little bit about what's what's this about. Well, soulmate search is um, about these two very different individuals mm -hmm. who kind of have a a rough start they meet each other initially and immediately butt heads uh -huh. um, in the background of all of this there is a very exclusive invite only dating service that is existing in their area uh -huh. and they both get an invite which is very uh -huh. coveted very exciting and they have like a 100 percent match rate guarantee oh um so then yeah. they both get their first setup on a blind date and they end up at this restaurant together and boom, it's that, that guy who was just such a jerk and uh -huh. they're sitting across the table from each other. Those terribly. Um, and then they kind of make a pact that they're, they're going to figure out who this is, who this eternity, that's what the dating service oh. is called, oh. who this eternity is, because they're very exclusive, very, like, they don't have an office, there's no number you can call. Um, they're going to find out who it is, and mm -hmm. uh, they're going to get their money back, and they're going to save other people from being heartbroken. Yes. So. See, this sounds really fun because at first I was thinking, oh, this is another app movie, because there's a lot of these, uh, the apps, but this is like a service. Right? Yes. It's on the app. Like a like a bespoke matchmaking uh, service. Yes. See, this is gonna be fun. And it is fun. <laughs> I mean, Jonathan Stoddard is like the king of rom coms right now. He, He's in one like every week. And I, so it it's crazy to be in this with him. <laughs> Jonathan Stoddard is is lovely. Actually just yeah. finished filming another rom com. It's a Christmas one with John. Uh. Um which should hopefully come out this year. So <laughs> he is he is a lovely human being. I always joke with him yeah. that he is like the the human version of a golden retriever. 
He's like, uh-huh. you know, pretty and adorable. He's very pretty. <laughs> But he has like a sense of humor. He doesn't take it like too well, seriously. He's, and so he's that makes great. him likable. Yeah, yeah. He's yeah. great. And he in the best way. Um uh-huh. the the director of Soulmate Search, which is um Jose uh, Montesinos, mm-hmm. he he joked with us too that um Jonathan Sard was like, you know, the golden retriever, and I was more like the house cat, which <laughs> I don't know if I fully subscribe to. Yes. But uh in comparison, right? I guess, I guess. <laughs> well, since it was your first rom com that you'd uh, been a lead on, did was he able to kind of help you learn the ropes? Oh yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. Um, I think for me, and and this is just kind of what I like in rom coms. I mm-hmm. kind of like the, especially the female leads, to be. Mm-hmm a little less like hard eyed, a little bit more yeah. messy and mm-hmm. and gritty and kind of make make the guy earn it a little more. Mm-hmm. Like a Sandra Bullock or Mila Kunis kind of rom com. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. um so I I did have to work on being more like smiley and bubbly. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so <laughs> So those were most of my notes. And even still today, even in like the rom-coms I'm doing now, they're like, can you just be a little bit more like swoony? And I was like, okay. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's, that sounds like a lot of fun. Did they, this one, did you self tape for this one as well? Yes. Yeah, I did. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So that must've been exciting when you found out you got the lead. Oh, must've been- I was, I was oh. over the moon. Yeah. Yeah. I still, I, every, every time. I mean, I, you know, you do one of these things and you're like, it'll probably be the last one. Like it's mm-hmm. just, you know, yeah. I yeah. think that's the, the condition of all actors. We're just well, like, there's so many you don't get that you gotta, you gotta appreciate any bookings that you get. Right. You always go <laughs> in exciting. with the assumption that you'll, you'll never hear from this character again. You have your one shot to like put forth your art and mm-hmm. cross your fingers that someone likes what you do. Mm-hmm. And even if, I mean, It's just, it's so subjective that, you know, some of my favorite, favorite auditions, favorite characters I've ever worked on and put together are not the ones I end up getting. So, Mm -hmm. yeah, but I'm sure that's true. Yeah. So if you were going to sell the movie to the Hallmark, you say, this is, this is what's special about it. This is what people are going to like. Here's why to tune in. What would you say? You know, This movie is super fun, uh, super Mm -hmm. quick pace. There's a lot going on. That's good. There is, there's some really interesting relationship dynamics with her best friend and her cousin who kind Mm -hmm. of like all Mm -hmm. like work together. And then you have um, John who plays Will and um, Brooke plays his sister. And there's a kid involved, which is a huge red herring throughout the whole thing where you kind of think one thing is happening. Oh. And another thing is going on. And this is all under the umbrella <laughs> of them trying to figure out what is going on with this dating mm-hmm. service. Is he always talking about the like rose of his life or whatever? And it turns out, oh, it's the it's his daughter, not and the other woman. Not quite. It's a son. Oh, close. Um, okay, close. And, okay. <laughs> and it's kind of just like a a big miscommunication. And then of okay. course there's that, you know, like gloomy gloomy guy sunshine girl and they're mm-hmm. butting heads and yeah it's it's really fun it's gonna be it's good. really i'm fun. excited we'd like to take a second and thank our sponsor for this episode of the podcast it's the hallmarkies merch store are you looking for that perfect gift for the postable hardy or hallmarky in your life what about getting that t-shirt or hoodie that will help you stand out at your next holiday party now is the time to check out the hallmarkies merch store full of festive designs by artists like jessica miller Carrie from Walmart Comics, and more. You can even have more than just shirts, but totes, cell phone cases, notebooks, mugs, and more. And it isn't just Hallmark. We have designs for Anna Green Gables, Man from Snowy River, The Nanny, and more. Every purchase at the merch store goes to help support the podcast and allows us to make the great content you know and love. There are frequent sales, so go to tpublic.com slash stores slash Hallmarkies or see the link in the description. That's tpublic.com slash stores slash Hallmarkies. All right. Well, we have some get to know you questions we like to okay. end our interviews off of. So the first one is what is the best ice cream flavor? Oh my goodness. I am 
I have been obsessed lately with getting affogatos. Have you ever had one of those? No. It's like a scoop of vanilla ice cream, but they pour a shot of espresso over it. Oh, wow. Yeah. It is. <laughs> it is so. It is so good. You're like life changing. It really. No. Yeah. I'm telling I, you, when I first had it, I was like, there, there is nothing better. <laughs> It's like two of my favorite things, though. So, right. Yeah. Vanilla yeah, ice hey. cream with a shot of espresso. Okay. I don't know good. if that's a flavor, but that's. Yeah. Uh, all right. Uh, what is your favorite color? Green. Mm, very on brand. Plants. Very, yeah. <laughs> good. Uh, what music are you into? Right now, um, I'm very into kind of like jazzy female yeah. singers. Okay. There's this band called Sammy Ray and Friends. Oh. And I am very into it. Cool. I'm also the type of person who plays like the same song over and over yeah. again until it's just like absolutely unlisten. You can't listen right. to it anymore. Everybody so. can hear it. <laughs> Put on the headphones. We don't hear that right. song again. Oh, my yeah. poor husband. <laughs> <laughs> All right. What is your go-to date night food? Um, go-to date night food, Italian probably. Okay. Uh, my husband makes a uh, great bolognese. Mm. so uh so what is your go-to date night activity if you're going out and doing something my very favorite thing to do is mm -hmm. to find a restaurant that has like um like a chef's menu where you don't get to pick anything and uh -huh. they bring you out like mm -hmm. the weirder the better in my opinion yeah. like little bites of things i love trying new food and especially if it has like a wine pairing with it mm. i will i will sit at a table for hours if you let me well i don't know how much of they have that in mexico but la is definitely the right place right yeah there's actually <laughs> so, there's some here in mexico <laughs> too That's we've good. got we've got some great restaurants down here yeah sure okay uh which do you like better dogs or cats i have a dog that i love very much but i i love cats too if i wasn't afraid that my big fluffy dog would just eat a cat i would probably have a cat as well so. All right. Uh, which do you like better, beaches or mountains? I am on a beach a lot. So like right now, my my first instinct was to say mountains, but that's not true. I'm a, I'm an ocean girl. Yeah, I would think someone who I, lived on a boat for yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> it's just what I don't have access but scarcity, to. I'm you're like, right. <laughs> you know, uh, but yeah, definitely, definitely the ocean. I love to swim in the ocean be on the beach yeah i like the heat so it's true i mean i uh i live in utah so i'm always surrounded i'm in I a literal utah. valley so there's all these mountains all around and all i think oh i just wish i was by the ocean <laughs> utah is stunning it i is love gorgeous. utah it is gorgeous. yeah more national parks than any other state i mean the whole <laughs> thing looks like a national park just <laughs> driving to the grocery store in utah is stunning so <laughs> Uh, all right. What's your favorite holiday to celebrate? Thanksgiving, I think, actually, because, mm -hmm. yeah, I mean, I love Christmas, too. But my favorite mm -hmm. things about Christmas are the family and the food yeah. and the gathering. And uh, I, I mean, it's it's a hard that's a hard one between Thanksgiving and Christmas. But my favorite things about Christmas are the Thanksgiving things. Mm -hmm. And I guess if you eliminate the the stress of buying gifts and all that i even go with thanksgiving do you have your uh, thanksgiving item that's your thing you make you always contribute i'm i'm a huge stuffing fan mm -hmm. so if there's not like guaranteed good stuffing gonna be there i will volunteer <laughs> my services to make stuffing and um i kind of switch it up all the time though i look for mm -hmm. like different recipes i think mm -hmm. this year i made like a brioche Mm. bread stuffing with like cranberries oh, in good. it and, <laughs> and well, then my father-in-law like... was like why are there berries <laughs> it's gotten like out of control at my house though because now there's like in my family there's a couple of us that are vegans and then my mom is gluten-free and so now oh. for, particularly for stuffings mm. there's got to be the gluten-free stuffing there's got to be the vegan there's got to be like why don't we just I tell my mom, I'm like, why don't we just go out to eat? And then everyone can just get whatever they want. <laughs> it's just too much. But it, um, I mean, it is a lot. That, but that's heresy. I love, 
heresy to suggest. You can't, you can't go out. You have to, you have to stay in and cook and bicker with your family over who gets the stove. Yes. It's all part of it. The four different kinds of stuffing that we have. Right. (laughs) Well, you're good. Just make sure they're properly labeled. (laughs) All right. What is your favorite Hallmark or romantic movie? Well, my favorite rom-com of all time is Miss Congeniality. Yeah. Um, yeah. And it's yeah. not really a Hallmark one, but yeah. it is. It's very funny. It's the best. Um, and I also just recently saw a great rom-com, um, Love at First Sight with Haley Lou Richardson. Have you know, you I, I, I have not seen that. It's one of my blind spots from 2023. I haven't seen, it? Uh, but I will be because I'm doing a, I'm going to be doing a 2023 romance ranking. So I got to watch that, but I've heard good things. It's, it's my, it's got to be like, it's way up there for me. Oh, I loved that movie. That I thought it was good. clever and so sweet. I, I mean, mm-hmm. I loved everything about it. It's hard sometimes to keep up with all these streaming ones sometimes oh, I know. That, that some know. fall through the cracks, but I'm working on it to, to get caught up, but that's good to hear. So that one's it's a great. Good one. Yeah. Good. Well, very good. You did it. You answered all the questions. <laughs> <laughs> so thank you so much for coming on talk with us. This was a blast and uh, we'll look forward to the new movie and seeing you and lots coming up. We're excited about this other movie with Jonathan that you talked about. So yeah, that one's, fun. that one's going to be super fun. And maybe we can have you back. Uh, before it, that anytime. One. That would be fun. (laughs) So if people want to follow you on like social media or anything like that, how did they do that? It's, um, it's a little tricky. My social media is who's Alex anyway. Okay. Um, is my social media handle, but I think if you type in Alexandra Harris, it'll pop up. Okay, cool. It's uh, got a little blue tick. Okay, good. We'll put, uh, the links in the description as well. So people can check that out. And uh, thanks so much. It's so great to meet you. Awesome. Thank you so much. This was super fun. We'd like to thank Alexander for coming on the podcast. This was so much fun to get to talk with her. I really loved it. So let us know what you think about all the different things that we talked about. And if you're excited for the new movie, put in the comment section or on Twitter. And you can find me at Rachel's Reviews, all of our social media, iTunes, YouTube, and on Rotten Tomatoes. So check that out. Also make sure that you're following the podcast, a Homework Keys Pod and Homework Keys Podcast all of our social media. And if you are listening on iTunes, please leave your ratings and reviews. That really helps a lot. And if you are watching on YouTube, please give the video a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. We really appreciate that. We have a playlist with all of our interviews on there. So check that out. And also check out a Patreon group that really helps us a lot. And our merch store, you get all kinds of fun rom-com inspired merch. Check that out. And uh, thanks so much, everybody. We'll talk to you later. Bye.